All that talking make you look just like a bitch, ayy. All that stalking make you look just like a snitch, ayy. Bitch, that Draco make me lean back like this, ayy. Double cup, only lean that I sip, ayy. Bitch, I'm running down with the stick, ayy. In the Sky Podcast, on this episode, we have Slice Throat. Um, for those who don't know about you, give yourself a little bit of an introduction. All right, well, my name is Slice Throat. I'm originally from New York City. Um, I'm a trap metal artist. I actually fucking just started making trap metal music not too long ago, a couple years back. <laughs> okay. And you're, um, how old are you? Right now I'm 26, turning 27, December. And how long have you been making music? I mean, was has it always been trap metal or? No, no, no. It's, uh, it's always been like a variety, but um, I kind of fell into the trap metal shit like a couple years ago, just going through a lot of like craziness in my life, dude. And like that was the only way I could like really vent my anger, you know, was out on the music. But um, I've been doing it since I was like 15, man. But taking it serious probably since I was like 21. Uh, what kind of shit kind of pushed you into trap metal? Uh, just dealing with life shit, man. Fucking, you know, fucked up relationships and family issues and just a lot of lot of negative shit in my life, you know. So I kind of took that negative energy and started raging on music. <laughs> now you said you're from New York, New York. Yeah, yeah. Originally, I'm from Queens. Okay, and what was your childhood kind of like? What was your upbringing like? Um, I grew up in Queensbridge Projects, where Nas and Mob Deep is from. Um, as a youngin, I was always traveling around with my family, fucking, in every borough I was raised in, basically, in New York City. But uh, my upbringing was kind of crazy, man. I, you know, my mom wasn't really around, my dad wasn't really around, so I was always out in the street. And, you know, I guess that's how I found music, dude. Like, it just it happened one day, you know. <laughs> what kind of shit would you find yourself uh, spending your days doing as a child as a child um honestly since i was about 12 just out fucking hanging out with my friends bugging out dude fucking <laughs> just being a knucklehead dude fighting and just crazy shit man oh so you was in the bad <laughs> shit yeah basically i feel that i feel that and yeah, especially <laughs> up in the fucking head. <laughs> oh yeah that i mean that's all there is to do if you ain't got no money to get like video games or some shit like that yeah. shit back then was crazy <laughs> So, um, you said you started making music at 15. Was that like the, when you just start dabbling into it? Yeah, that was like the first time I ever did. Um, how it came about was, uh, me and my friend were basically dating these two twins back in uh, high school. <laughs> well, actually middle school. And, um, fucking, he was just like, Hey man, like, you know, I rap and, you know, I think we should make a song for them and fucking perform it. And I was like, you know, like, I'm not really a rapper, dude. Like, I don't really know how to do any of that. He was like, I'll teach you. And then, uh. You know, we ended up making a song. It was pretty dope. We performed it, and uh, everybody was, like, bum-rushing us on the stage. And ever since then, dude, I fell in love with that feeling. So you guys were originally doing it to impress those two twins? Basically, yeah, just to, like, you know, fucking get on their good side and shit, you know? What kind of shit was you making back then? Back then, it was uh, more vibey type music, like, you know, laid-back chill, like, you know? Okay. And, um... So when did you really start taking it serious? I started taking it serious, serious when I was about 20, 21. I really started, like, taking this shit as a, as a like, you know, it's not a hobby anymore. Like, this is something I really want to do, you know? It sounds like your mic, your mic sounds, like, inconsistent. Like, it's, like, you're far away and then you're close and, like, there's, like, ruffling in it. Yeah, my bad. I'm right here next to the phone. I mean, uh, is it a little better now? Yeah, it sounds perfect. Uh yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I just started taking it serious around 20, 21, man. Like, it went from being a hobby to something I really wanted to take serious and actually do as a, you know, as an actual occupation, you know? So, from 15 to, like, 20, 21, what kind of were, were you pursuing, you know, because you as said far you weren't as taking music, it serious? I was just probably just making music for fun, just, I guess, getting better at it and learning, you know, from other artists, whatever I can to, you know, better my, my, uh, my flow and being able to stay on beat and write music, you know? Okay. Okay. So as far as like growing up and shit and just like overall, who would you say your favorite rapper is? I honestly, dude, I've never had a favorite, favorite, favorite rapper, but I've always been like the type to listen to like everything, dude, like between raw country, fucking, you know, hip hop, metal, like, I've always listened to everything, but as far as, like, having somebody that was, like, particularly a favorite artist of mine, I never really had that. <laughs> okay. And we're going to we're gonna take, like, a step back here. What, like, particularly inspired you to start making you like, to start taking it real fucking serious? Like, this is what I want to do. 
it became like a drug to me, dude. Like just being able to vent on music and you know, as far as like fucking recording and performing was like the main thing, dude. Like once I performed and like I got that energy from people, like when I performed, dude, like I fell in love with that shit. It was like a drug to me, you know. Like I couldn't stop after that. So I was like, you know, this is something I definitely want to do forever, bro. So when was your first show? Like when did you figure that out? My first first like show, like that was when I was like fifteen. We performed oh, okay. at, that, that same we, show. Yeah, we performed at like a teen club. It was like one of those little like you know teen places. It was like a rollerblade place, and it was it was crazy. Okay, okay. And ever since then, how many times have you performed? I would say over a hundred. Damn, bro, that's a hustle. Yeah. That's a hustle. Yeah, I'm performing in a lot of different places, dude, different states. Hell yeah, man. Shit, I forgot to ask you. You kind of were talking about New York, like you don't stay in New York. Do you still stay in New York? Currently, I'm in Florida, so yeah, no, I'm not in New York right now. Oh shit, that's a completely like different fucking everything. Yeah, I mean, I grew up out here too for about five, six years on and off. Like, you know, I, I was raised out in Orlando. Oh shit, is that is that where you're staying at now, Orlando? No, I'm actually in Tampa. Oh, okay, so what? My flow is kind of like a, between like some New York. I guess that's where I got the trap metal shit, which is being out here for so long and yeah. falling into. <laughs> You know, <laughs> that's all they fuck with out there, damn near, bro. I fuck with like, it though. I fuck with it heavy. But um, what brought you to Orlando when you were a kid? Well, my mom actually had came back into my life when I was like, I say like 16 or so, and uh, you know, she was like, you know, you should come out here, you know, check it out, and you know, like she basically wanted to be back in my life again. You know, she left me at a young age because she was young herself, so you know, it's understandable. But um, when I came out here to Florida, dude, like you know, I came out here for her, and then I stood out here for about six years on and off. Do you fuck with the weather compared to New York? I do, but then I don't. You know what it is, bro? Like, I'm so in between, dude. Like, I love the snow, and I love how it is in New York when it's, like, summertime and it's hot. Because it's not that hot, but, like, out here, dude, it gets crazy. The only thing I don't like about Florida, dude, is, like, the lightning and, like, the hurricanes and the rain every fucking day, dude. It's, uh... <laughs> yeah, bro, I, I've never been down there, but, like, apparently, like, it's just it's humid as fuck, bro. So like, I don't understand. Just yourself, like, Sitting in the oven while it's on, like, <laughs> <laughs> and fucking yeah, alligators hot. running around you and shit. Fuck that. Oh my, I almost caught one on a on a fishing pole. <laughs> really, bro? That's fucked. Yeah. That is I was fucked. Fishing. Grabbed my reel and shit. Snapped the line though. It's pretty pretty big. I think it's crazy. Those motherfuckers that kill them. They got these little fucking like guns. I don't even know. Like they're like homemade guns, and they just put a shotgun shell on them, bro. They just put it up to their head and fucking blast them. That's crazy. No, it's, yeah, but a lot of people out here fucking eat, eat gator and shit. <laughs> you ever ate gator before? Hell nah, dude, but now I kind of want to try. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, bro. I, iguanas and shit, you could just fucking kill an iguana anywhere in Florida. That's crazy. Yeah, well, they're usually, like, more down towards, like, fucking, like, uh, like Miami, West Palm area. It's crazy what... that they came here because, like, settlers and shit that came from Europe would just bring them over and they just breed it and shit. Yeah, that's nuts, dude. Like, when I was in West Palm, I used to see them shits all the time, bro. Like, huge. Like, probably mm. damn near, like, half the size of me. <laughs> Big-ass iguanas and shit. I don't understand. Florida's just a different, like, fucking country, bro. Yeah, they're point. done. <laughs> so, um, your music and your parents, do your parents necessarily support your music career? Yeah, they do, 100%. Um, My dad, I actually went by a different name before I went by Slice Throat. I uh I used to go by G Mac Giano, which was my dad's name, and um me and him kind of had a fallout, so which is why one of the reasons why I changed my name, you know. And how long have you been going by Slice Throat? How long I've been going by Slice Throat? Probably like a good three three years tops. Where'd that name come from? Uh, uh I was going through some real depressive shit. And um you know the only thing I could think of was fucking like slicing my throat, and like one day I was like rapping. Just relieving some fucking tension and shit. And uh, I said something along the lines of like, you know, slicing throat and shit. And I was like, wait, like, that's a dope name. Like, I started looking online and like, there was like no rappers that had the name Slice Throat or like any social medias. Like, nobody had that name. So I was like, you know what? That's it, dude. Like, <laughs> and I, I kind of saved fuck, oh, that, that depression and shit. And like, just started, you know, I made the persona Slice Throat and just started fucking running with the rage music, you know. So, what kind of music, like rap, were you making before the whole trap metal? More like life, life shit, or like vibey shit. That shit, you know, people could just ride and smoke too, you know. Okay. I used to have a group called Wavy Boys, so we made a lot of quote unquote wavy music, you know. <laughs> Is that group still exist? Uh, 
in a sense, yes, but no. Like, there's still the artists that were still a part of it are still around, and we still like you know say we're Wavy Boys forever, but we really don't put anything out anymore under Wavy Boys. Oh, so there's like no beef or anything? Like y'all still yeah. fuck with each other? Nah, yeah, it was just me, a couple artists out of New York, and maybe like two artists in Canada. That's, but I still keep fire. one, so yeah. So um, I see on social media is that you have such a big following. How how did you you know build up that following in that platform? Uh, my first my first account I had a I had 125k it's at 116 now because I haven't been active on it in like a year and a half. Um, when I first had that account, it started off as a fight page. Like I would just post like a lot of crazy ass fights and shit. And like one day it got to like a good decent decent amount of followers, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just use this one as my main page. And uh, I posted a fight, but it was actually a fight video of me fighting. <laughs> And I had X's song "Look at Me" in the background playing as well, and this was like when X was like first blowing up, you know. So that fight ended up going like super fucking viral. Like hell of X pages reposted it, and X himself ended up reposting it. Yeah. I ended up getting Facetime X, you know what I'm saying, over this video, which is fucking dope as hell. But um, that shit just like grew enormously, and then like once I dropped my first song, which was uh, I think it was "Woke Up in Hell," which was one of my first like rage music like songs. That shit just like fucking took off man i hit over a million on soundcloud last year okay so um yeah. let's take a couple of steps back what gotcha. this this whole fight between you and whoever what was the big yeah. deal with that what happened what was that well that fight um happened because he basically had one of his friends go into my cousin's house and steal shit while he was outside with my cousin like keeping him busy and playing basketball with him outside and um i asked him about it and he lied to me and told me he had nothing to do with it. And then I talked to a couple people who told me he did. So when I seen him, I was like, you know what, bro? Like, you're either going to fight me or get your ass whooped. And he didn't want to fight. So I was just like, fuck it, dude. Like, I just started fucking wailing on him. <laughs> like, you got to get shady. your ass. Like, you know, like. <laughs> it's, it's like a whole nother fucked up. I would have been different. You know what I'm saying? But like, dude, he lied. And like, I was like so mad about it. So when I seen him, I was just like, yo, like, there's no going back now. Like, you're going to fight me. Like, <laughs> That's one of like the most sneakiest, like most conniving ways i've ever heard of somebody robbing somebody either yeah dude like they fucking stole like a playstation xbox like all his mom's jewelry and like hella shit dude it's so bad so what was it like talking to x on facetime what kind of like energy did you get from him personally did he share any advice with you positive fucking vibe dude. positivity was like everything bro like honestly when when i spoke to him bro like i kept it real way i'm like dude you're fucking younger than me and i look up to you you feel me like that that should mean something to you bro like you know and, He's uh, definitely he, like one of a kind. Yeah, he always told me to just prosper, bro, and just spread positivity. Like, he told me how in the beginning, like, he was just, like, so stuck in a dark, dark place, like how I was, you know, in the beginning. But, um, he literally stopped doing drugs, stopped fucking drinking, stopped smoking, you know what I mean? He probably only smoking cigarettes, but other than that, like, he just kept a sober mind and just was spreading positivity, like, to everyone. Like, I don't know if you've seen, but literally every artist throughout the music industry was getting a text from X sending positivity. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I couldn't understand how he was doing all of this shit with his music, doing shows, and then still had enough time to reach out to everyone and give them positive vibes and, and just be like, yo, bro, like, I hope you prosper. I love you, bro. Like, stay safe. You know what I mean? Like, just weird to, like, it's crazy, dude. Like, he was everywhere at once. He's literally all about the people. Like, that's what nobody understood. Like, so many people fucking hate on him. Like, they did before he passed. Like, that was yeah. the worst when they hated on him before he passed. Yeah, dude, I mean, it was dope, though, man, just getting that little bit of positiveness from him, bro, like, it was it was different, bro, it was definitely uplifting, you know, it made me take shit a little more serious. A lot of people would, like, legit give their life to have that conversation that you did with X, too, like, seriously, like, yeah, so dude, many people, like, I Oh, yeah, actually, it started off, before I even talked to X, I, like, talked to, like, Kid Trunks and, like, uh, Craig Zen and Cooley Cut, you know, and then it went from them to like me getting a random ass call, and I'm like, holy shit, like you know what I'm saying? You, you didn't even know who it was. It was just like a random number. <laughs> yeah, it was just a random ass number, and I like it was a FaceTime, so I'm like, maybe it's like a fan or some weird shit. So I like answered it, and I was like, I just seen fucking X's face. And this is before he had like <laughs> the blue hair. This is like when he had the half and half shit, like when he's still like in his fucking prime, you know? Was this like that, the hit and lick X? Yeah, yeah, definitely the hit and lick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. That's one of my favorite, but even though I really do like the blue hair where he was legit, like, just being so fucking positive and giving all this stuff to foster kids and shit, that, that's amazing. Have you seen that? No, I actually haven't, but that's pretty dope. I, I can only fucking, I wouldn't even doubt it, you know? <laughs> he was all about everyone else, man. He just wanted to spread love to people, bro. 
So, um, for every artist that, um, has face tattoos, I kind of ask them about how their family feels about it and what is the story behind their <laughs> face tattoos and when they got them. So, yeah. what, what's the inside behind yours? All right. Well, I started way before, like, it was even a fucking thing. Like, my first couple face tattoos was a dollar sign. And the reason why I got the dollar sign was, like, you know, it was one, because, like, money was always the, the you know, the uh, mission. Um, two, because I really wanted to dedicate myself to, to the music thing. So I was like, you know, that was my way of saying, like, you know what, fuck it. Like, I'm going to really take this shit serious. Um, everything that I got on my face means something. Like, I have, I have uh, the year I was born. I have a Hanya mask on the, the right side of my cheek, which is, it represents a jealous female demon of wisdom. I've been through a lot of jealousy in relationships, gained a lot of wisdom from it, which is why I got that. Um, the slice throat, obviously, on my neck came from, you know, the image. Uh, I got cursed above my eyebrow. You know, I've always felt like I was cursed with, like, bad luck in my life. Um, I have immortal one in my eye. You know, I felt like I was immortal to, you know, the pain I've been through. So I've been through it so much. <laughs> I have a uh, tormented on the side of my face in, like, with a barbed wire around it. Which basically represents, you know, life, life's torments. And, um, what else do I have? Dang, I gotta, <laughs> I forget so many. All right, I have a, <laughs> heart, I have a broken heart, which I got after, like, Peep and X died. Like, I was like, you know, I got the broken heart for them and shit. But my parents, as far as the tattoos, my mom, like, fucking despises them. She does not like them at all. Dude. Like, I told her I want more, but she's like, fuck no. Like, <laughs> I mean, you're already here, so why not? Exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, dude, I mean, you know, I guess it's more of a respect. I, I don't know, I kind of want more, but I'm trying not to do so many. I don't think they look bad, like, like on anybody, but, like, I mean, the people who legit get, like, whole ass, like, their whole fucking face tattooed, I mean, that looks a little ridiculous to me. Yeah, I feel like the ones that I got really didn't take too much away from my, like, actual facial features and shit, so oh, I didn't go. Hell no. Well. So, um, as far as your music career, um... What are some of your aspirations? Where do you want to take this? What do you want to do with this? Honestly, dude, I just want my music to get out there, bro. I just want people to, you know, really hear my shit. And maybe, you know, it might fucking, my stress and my fucking shit that I'm going through might help somebody else get through their shit. You know, like, I've had a couple of people tell me, like, hey, bro, like, you know, you fucking raging on your songs. It, like, gave me fucking hope, bro. Like, it makes me feel like, you know, I, like, I found a way to relieve this energy now. You know what I mean? That's definitely good. I like it when people, you know contact me even though i don't make music but they just fuck with me like i i really do like that that people can fuck with me and oh, eventually yeah, me being able to have good enough content to where if someone's having a bad day they can just turn on their tv go to youtube and just watch one of my things and i'm just making them feel better that's all it's about oh yeah dude that plus you know just um i've always been a, you know into music man and you know listening to everybody's music dog like i've been to the point where I'm just like, now I want to work with these artists, dude. Like, I know I can, you know? Like, I know I can get to that point where I can actually have these famous people on my songs, you know? Yeah, exactly. I so, bet, that's... especially on that whole point, like, you talking to X made you realize that, like, you know, it's not really, he's, they're really not that, like, different from us. Like, they're not at all. They're really not. I mean, there is nothing different besides for, you know, they actually fucking the just got an opportunity, man, that a lot of us, a lot of people don't really get, you know? So when you get that opportunity, bro, you got to fucking take that shit and run with it. Exactly. So, um, I know you've kind of elaborated on a little bit about your music, but what inspires a lot of your songs? Um, honestly, just shit that I go through in life, bro. Like, I could just be fucking mad about, like, just some random shit, like, you know what I mean? And that little bit of energy that I feel, you know, I'll just fucking take off and look for a beat and just start writing whatever I feel. Okay. So if I feel, yeah, I'll write, I'll write something that, you know, would be like, more vulgar and angry you know like talking about beating people up is just weird shit but like if i'm feeling sad then like i'll make something that you know is more about life and just expressing how uh, i feel about shit all right so um you got any up up and coming uh, projects or eps or singles coming out yeah i have an untitled ep coming out next month we're not sure on the date but i'm pushing for like at least uh like around september 11th um i'm not too sure on the name yet but uh, I'm still figuring it out, like, that part. <laughs> what are the vibes yeah. on that? Um, The album for next month is going to be a uh, trap metal EP, so it's going to be a lot of rage music. Um, After that album comes out, I'm trying to push for, like, maybe a month. I would say about two, three months after that album, I'm going to push to put out, like, a more radio play, vibey, chill type of album. 
Hell yeah, I can see on the radio now. Now we're playing Slice Throat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that'd be awesome. That'd be lit. So, Hell yeah, um, dude. Any messages you want to give to the audience listening? Um, Honestly, dude, just fucking whatever you guys are fucking striving to do in life, do it. Don't let nobody ever tell you you can't, bro, and fucking go hard for that shit because it's possible to make anything happen in life. Any shout-outs you want to give to anybody? Any shout-outs? Fucking everybody, dude. Just shout-out to the fucking whole world who even knows who I am, dude. Like, fucking <laughs> all you guys who fucking, you know, help support me. And if you guys love me, dude, I love all you guys back. You know what I mean? I'm always going to be here for you guys no matter what. Any fucking body who is ever going through any depressive shit, y'all can hit my Instagram and fucking DM me and talk to me. If you guys feel like you don't have anyone to talk to, I'm here. Facts. I felt that. And same for me, too. Like, if anybody needs somebody to talk to. DM either of us like seriously 100% yep thank you so much for listening to the In The Sky podcast thank you Slice Throat for coming on here man it was awesome talking to you appreciate you dog anytime man